Well, you don't need your computer until I okay. until I say so. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, <laughs> I'm not comfortable with that. I mean, I'm computer. so sorry. There's certain things that are habitual with me. <laughs> teacher mode. Thank you guys for coming. I think this is a, I'm very impressed. We have a full house and, and uh, we don't usually get that for digital media things. And what I want to do today is I want to show you and share with you the journey that I've gone on in order to create a notation for music that anyone can play. And the idea is not so much music creation, but music participation. And I think it's critical that we all become players again. You know, there was a time when we could all sing together and we sang in the car and some of us oldsters remember singing in cars and singing on buses and, and we knew all the songs. And you guys are very fortunate to be in the 21st century, those of you who do not remember that, um, because you get a sampling of music from all over the world that's wonderful. But have we given up one thing for the other? And so since uh, the younger people don't usually sing in cards or sing in buses, because it's really hard to sing when you're looking down at whatever device. Um, I'd like to bring back the feeling of participation in music. So those of you who do not play, can you indicate to me if you don't play music? Okay, all right. And do you, do you, those who do play music, do you read music? Okay, tell me those of you who read music, do you read it well? Yes, okay, all right. Um, I've been teaching in, in Zachary, Louisiana for a long time, and a lot of times when I ask my students, do you read music, they say, yes, and then they go, and I said, okay, read this music, and they go, yeah, <laughs> and the fourth, D, G, and so what are they doing, and I try to explain to them, what are you doing, if you were going to do this in English, what would you be doing? You would be reading a sentence that cat jumped over the wall. T H E, the. Okay, did you read the word the? No. What did you do? They spelled it. And so we have taught our children in the school systems and throughout how to spell, but we don't necessarily teach them how to read and what a sentence is and what a Phrase is in music. So, um, so I would like to be able, enable people through this method to get past that and to get into reading something. And the best way to do that is to give them an opportunity to, to incorporate their skill set that they already know into being able to produce music. Who has had this experience? For those of you, yes, you know, we look at a piece of music, and even those of us who are musicians can look at a piece of music and go, ants in a train wreck, and we know how to decipher it, and we know how to get past it, but it's still sometimes quite daunting to us. So what I've done is I've named this process key music, and yes, I named it kind of one of the one of the fifth graders told, gave me the name. I said, well, what would we, you call this? And he said, key music. And I'm like, ah, from the mouths of babes, brilliant. So um, my purpose for key music, like I said, is to break down the barrier, the initial barrier to music participation. A lot of people find this initial barrier to be the reading of music. So they look at these little dots on the page and they just, it just blows their mind and they don't go past that point. Um, I also wanted to provide an instrument that was, my new favorite word is ubiquitous, but that was so ordinary that anyone could get one without making a tremendous investment. Um, those of us who are musicians, other than our singers, 
carry their instruments with them, um, have to invest a lot of money in an instrument. Sometimes that's not possible for a, a regular family if anyone has seen what it costs to maybe feed children these days. It's just not part of the disposable income. Um, so the idea was to find an instrument that everyone had access to, that they could use easily. The other one was because I work in the school system, I, need to, I needed to find a way to get around the word no from, um, from those in charge who had the purse. And the first thing they always say is the F word, and the F word is funding. No, we don't have a funding for a music program. Well, this is a way for them to use what's already available to them in their school district or in their school. All the schools, no matter how poor and how underserved, have computers nowadays. They also have internet access, which is a remarkable thing. So let's use what they've got uh, in order to make music. It puts me in mind of an old speech by Booker T. Washington. And in that speech, he told everyone to try to encourage people to utilize the things that were in their environment in order to improve their lives. What the, he said was, let down your bucket where you are. That means use what you've got and try to do the best you can with what you've got. Um, so that's part of the financial excuses. But the best reason of all is that the reason we're musicians, and we've actually stepped into the professional realm of doing this, is that it's a blast. We just love it. And it brings us a tremendous amount of joy. So in order to spread that joy, we have to elim eliminate some of the barriers to spreading that joy. Now, nothing comes from nothing. And this is the way that we got to what you've got in your folders and what we're going to work on today. This is the evolutionary history of it. The first thing I came up with was, uh, I called it MOVE because I can't resist acronyms. And I've met a bunch of people here who can't resist them either. So I'm in the perfect place. I called it my own virtual ensemble. I have played harp for quite a while. And at that time, I was in a harp ensemble. I was invited to be in a harp ensemble uh, when I lived on the Gulf Coast. And it was the first time ever that I had seen eight harps in a room. I was so blown away by that. Eight, eight harps, and they're all beginners. And so what they do, they all play the same thing. And I thought to myself as a composer, well, what if each one of them played one different note all at the same time? Well, we'd have a heck of a chord with eight notes playing at once. So I figured, OK, I would make arrangements for lever harp and pedal harp ensemble. And this is what the arrangement looked like. Il est né le divin enfant is a French folk song for Christmas. He is born the divine infant. And what you'll notice on this particular sheet music is that some of the notes are red and some of the notes are blue. It just so happens on a harp, it is strung in different colors. Now, you may not know that from being in the audience at the, uh, at the symphony, because it's so far away. But yes, in order to figure out what notes we're playing on 42 strings or more, right, Gina? Um, <coughs> they're color-coded, yay. All the red strings are C, all the blue strings are F, and that is that about that. And so in this, what I used was finale in order to do a click track and distribute the music. And what you can do is follow if you don't, if you don't read music, each one, each note is a note, is what you're hearing.
words. Anyway, we were, <laughs> I pressed the wrong button and we were back here. And to keep you from having to hear the whole tune, I'm so sorry that I pressed the wrong button. Um, but this is again, is an old, old folk song and in the public, well in the public domain. Um, so that was the first attempt to get people to use technology or to get technology to help people to learn something. Whoops. Okay, we saw this. Now, the next thing, what happened after, after that was Hurricane Katrina. And so Hurricane Katrina blew me off of the Gulf Coast and deposited me here in Baton Rouge. And here, yes, thank you. And I got a wonderful um, position as the talented music instructor in the Zachary School System. And I was given an opportunity of lifetime to design my own program from scratch and to, um, and to find a way to teach kids who had talent in music and, um, and see what we could do. However, no instruments, <clears throat> no classroom that was assigned just to me. And I had to do the entire school system. So what do you do? if you have no instruments and you have to teach in a library. So the, the question was, how do you teach music in silence? Well, you use a computer. So what I did was I brought in my Mac mini, plugged all my kids into, uh, this is before your turn, plugged all my kids into uh, the computers that were at the school, plugged in the keyboard, plugged in the headphones, the mouse, and they got to play garage band and blew their little brains out and we made some spectacular music. Then we had to find a way to perform. So what's the next thing to do? We got one of these. I found this stuff. No, I never did play Mario, Super Mario, Mario or Super Mario. But this, as you can see, is from a Nintendo Wii. This was available at Walmart for about 20 something bucks. That was accessible to all the parents, unless of course they already had one in their house and most of them did. So they were able to bring this into this thing, this game controller and, um, and they didn't really believe me when I said, your kids are gonna make music using this but we proved them, we proved it to them a little bit later. The way you do this is that you take the game controller and hook it into a computer. And this software right here was written by a guy in Paris uh, and it's called Osculator. And it's a way to hook up each button on the Wiimote, on the Wii remote with a particular pitch. I could assign a pitch to each one of these buttons. And then I told the computer, well, we want it to sound like gritty funk on top of it. So we could assign a pitch and we could assign a sound at that point. Um, and then I plugged it into a grid. And the grid allowed us to do counting. Now, the next thing though was Children are wonderful and resilient. And the first thing they wanted to do, I said, well, you need to make a score. And what a score is, is the directions on how to play whatever it is that you're gonna play. Because how else are you gonna remember what you're gonna play unless you write it down? So in this particular case, the score, as you'll be able to see, is that this fourth grader um, wrote her own score. <laughs> for what she's going to play. These little things in the Wii remote is a thing called, called an accelerometer. This means that you can do this gesture and it will activate this machine. So we could assign a sound actually to this gesture. So I want you to see, or rather hear what she came up with. It's called Storm and Frost. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
she's now a senior at Zachary High and she's going to be going. She's, in fact, she's not here today because she's doing her um, audition for her music to get into ULL, her music. We want her here, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> she's also a percussionist, as you can probably tell, she was into percussion. Now, after this, what happens is that um, I have some older children also using this device, not an instrument, but a device. And, um, and what they did was they created a background, um, background, and then they played their Wiimotes background as accompaniment, and then they played their Wiimotes. And they named it paranoia, which is something that seventh and eighth graders, you know, do. And it is a duet with accompaniment crafted in Logic Pro, which is the up. Uh, yes, go Logic. I, I know we. You know, uh, I know we do. We love this. It is the upgrade essentially to GarageBand. If you've ever heard of GarageBand on Apple products, this is the next step. <coughs> jamming to that. That was great. And the next one, that is the largest group of people I ever had using the Wiimotes. I used two iMacs. Those are those um, Macintosh that are all in one, you know. And I used, there were 11 performers. They all had Wiimotes. And the, I didn't bring it with me, but there's an, an extra little piece. It's called a nunchuck, and it's actually just a, a joystick, and it looks like, I don't know, a little egg with a joystick on it. So we needed more notes. We ran out of notes. So they needed this extra little, little thing, and we have one conductor with this. Friends and family, if you would like to, please stand for our national anthem.
joke for those who don't know, what are the last two words of the Star Spangled Banner? <laughs> <laughs> Play ball. Uh, after this, I came here to LSU. And the one thing that, that I was told when I got here from, from the group that I was working with, which is, I will probably never forget this statement when I said, oh, I work with Wiimotes and you know, we play songs and we have kids and everybody and anybody can do it and all this stuff. And the comment that was made to me was, Wiimotes, really? That's so 2009. <laughs> And I went, oh, okay, so I'm, I have a search for the ultimate ubiquitous instrument, and it's already obsolete. Great. <laughs> Great. So what I found was this. And the ASCII keyboard, in case you're not sure, is just our normal, I can't pull this out, but you, you know, it's a normal keyboard layout that we type on every day. And so in the search for the ubiquitous, in the most ubiquitous instrument, I had one in front of me all along that I didn't even, yes, I had the ruby slippers on and it could have taken me home anytime, but who knew? So this was, um, this shows you that I was able to plug in my already, the, the, the chart that I had already made the Wiimotes and use it for the ASCII keyboard instead. And so as you can see, this is, this is what happened even with the Wiimotes. We have a line of the buttons that we're going to press and underneath is the counting line. So essentially if you can count to four and you know your alphabet on the keyboard, you can play this piece of music right here. So when you count one, you would play, you would push five, two, and between the count of two and three, you would press this button. On three, you would press E. On four, you would press W and so forth. So it seemed reasonable. I also was able to assign pitches to each one of the keys on the ASCII keyboard. So I went, oh, we might have something. <laughs> okay, this is okay. So the other thing that the folks here at LSU told me was, well, what happens if the music is more complicated? Well, got an answer for that too. And so what I made was key music extended notation so that instead of just eight notes, I was able to plug in more advanced notation, rhythmic notation. Um, drummers love this. They can already read the, the, uh, the rhythms, but they're not so hot when it comes to the FACEs and the every good boy does fine. So this, is, this made an advanced copy. Now, it just so happens that whenever you invent something, the odds are that somebody else has come up with it first. This is why we do research, I think. I actually found somebody who came up with the idea first um, and, and met them, which is also another wonderful thing about being a university, at a university. So I was able to email and all, all the way to England and go, can you tell me something about your little invention? Well, they had abandoned that in 2009 because it was just, you know. Um, but anyway, so the key music, uh, can go as far as you need it to go. In other words, it can be used, it could be as advanced as you need it to be. Um, now this is how it's done, the notational structure. How you translate a piece of music into key music. Right here, this is a standard note. This is standard notation, music notation. Uh, this is middle C. On a regular piano, middle C is the C note that's right in the middle. So we don't name things. So, you know, we're very simple at naming things. It's the middle C in the middle. On this chart, it shows the notation for middle C. And what you do is you follow it, follow the lineup, and it will tell you that this is C, middle C is the third octave C. The next C up is C4. 
and so forth, C5, and down the other way it goes ahead. This is called scientific pitch notation. It's very common in electric keyboards because in a small keyboard, because it's digital, we can actually, we can move that C to anywhere we want on that keyboard. It doesn't matter, you only have 46 keys on it. So you can put that C anywhere you want, depending on how you want to play. The next thing that happens is that we have to assign the rhythmic notation before. In this case, in most cases in key music, one box is the duration of an eighth note. Two boxes then would be a quarter note. Three boxes, dot a quarter, and etc. So if I am showing a quarter note, which would get four beats in four four time, it would get eight boxes. So I put in the letter that I want to play for eight boxes, and there you go. You play it once, you hold it down for eight boxes. The next, so so this is the whole structure of it where you have regular music, traditional notation, you assign the scientific pitch notation to the note, you look at your key music chart, find the pitch notation that gives you whatever letter you're gonna play on your keyboard. The next one is you plug it into the grid at the right time, and then voila, you have a piece of music, a piece of notation that's able to be played. Um, the other thing that they did for me at, at um, OSU is that they said, well, Kat, you got to make an instrument. I'm like, okay. And to avoid all the jokes about old dogs and new tricks, I actually, actually learned how to program this myself. And uh, so my design for key music was to have, to have a screen where the music came up on the screen and you could just play it all in one. Look, it looked simple, but it wasn't simple. So I have a pull down menu and I can choose whatever song I want. Um, I don't think anybody under, under 40 knows these songs, but I know them. So everything old is new again. And so, yeah, I know you guys don't have no idea. Right? I know Shenandoah. Shenandoah, okay, that's one. Sweet Betsy from Pike. You know Sweet Betsy from Pike? Yeah. Whoa. American music class. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Wow. Well, I bet you don't know them all. Okay. Um, and no, I didn't put Kumbaya in this, in this lineup, but I could have. Um, so that's your pull down menu of your, of your songs. There's also a pull down menu of whatever you want it to sound like, your instrument pull down menu. Um, you also have an emergency stop button because everybody needs a panic button, okay? <laughs> um, you also have transposition up and down by octave. In other words, if it's too low for you, you just take it and shift it up higher. And uh, the nice thing about my instrument is that this can be done on the fly. You can do it while you're playing. And there's a score like we're used to looking at. There's the keyboard. And what you see when you open it is that. And essentially what you end up with is this. So I thought that was a good way to put all the key music in one place and make it easy to play. Now, uh, this was this, this year. And to show you that our seventh graders can actually play this in a laptop quartet. They've, they've named themselves the laptop quartet. And I'd like to share this with you. <laughs>
was at a premium with this entire project was time. The only time I ever had with any of these children was about 45 minutes a week. And those of us who play music understand that that is no time <laughs> at all. So the idea was to get them to be able to play something in such a limited amount of time with limited resources. We come down to something we call performance practice. And there's a lot that goes into our music. So basically, we don't show everybody what's going on in the background. And uh, we are musicians and not magicians. Uh, by the time you guys see whatever it is that we've made, we have put in many hours, if not years, of, of uh, rehearsal and training and practice. And everything we do is the result of those things. First thing we have to do is we count a lot, over and over again, a lot. And, uh, and we have to listen to one another. Sometimes what you heard were, were errors in, in what the children played with the examples that I cited. Well, I did have parents back in the day saying to me, well, that's all pre-recorded, isn't it? I'm like, no. You'll, you'll hear train wrecks and you'll hear mistakes. And, and we are so accustomed nowadays to hearing a pre-recorded perfect rendition of something that we are no longer used to hearing error. Well, error is more common than lack of error. Um, so we repeat over and over again. We start slowly and then we increase it. We play with other people. Well, doing anything with a bunch of other people is, presents its own set of issues. You can't stop. If you make a mistake, that's great. This is where we as adults are really inferior to children in that we are very, very hung up. We don't want to make a mistake. We don't want to be shown to, to make any errors, but kids will fall all over themselves and get up and laugh. So we need to get back to that childlike understanding of that we can get up and laugh. And we're not looking for perfection. If you want perfection, get a recording. And even then, it won't be perfection, but it will be a snapshot of one moment of a piece of music. And we are trying to be expressive. Um, we can also use technology to help us rehearse. And so what I want to show you is what we're using today. And this is going to be soundtrack. You guys are using this. And one of the ways to use it is to mute one part of it and then play along with it so you get the whole background so you're still hearing the ensemble while you're playing. So uh, you have the muted part and everyone's playing along with you. the instrumentation. You can make it in any bunch of instruments that you can design. So it can sound any way you desire. Can you tell I like Disney songs?
how you get to open your computers. And when you look in your folder, you'll see a copy of the music. You can pull out your music. Okay. And we're going to try Ode to Joy. You're just like me. She's like, no, just like, oh, okay. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Is anyone having trouble accessing the soundtrack? Uh, yeah. Oh, give it a give it a second. I'm sorry, I can't hear. What's the username? The username? Daryl, how much is that? I'm logged into mine, but they need to log into theirs. For people are using their own computers, they have to make their own. Okay. So just 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 join soundtrack. Yes. Okay. Cool. I'm sorry. If it's giving you a login screen, I'll have to help you. Okay. Well, we can do the And when you get onto Soundtrap, you're going to see, wonderful, uh, add new track. It's going to be on the left hand side. You just click that once, and it will show you a whole bunch of instruments. And just for grinsies, uh, pick whatever instrument you want. Just for fun. And when you come up with your keyboard, you can click on the picture of the instrument itself. You can click on, on the instrument itself. And then you have more choices, specific choices, of what instrument you think you'd like. At the beginning, when it has the pictures of the add new track as instruments, is that okay for the one as well? Yes. You just click on any instrument you want. And and this is the part where it doesn't matter if we make noise. We can make as much racket as we want. Where are our other choices? Do we have like down people? So you can you can if you press the little triangle, it will sample the sound for you. So you can hear. Too many choices. Too many choices. <laughs> You'll notice on the Apple on the Apple computers, if you're not used to them, there is a volume control at the top. And we're just gonna make a lot of racket because that's our that's the point. So crank it all the way up. Yes, yeah, I guess you're recording your own. Yeah, I don't know if I do that. This sounds great. This is very tame for the way you get in these rooms. Very tame sounds. <laughs> Are you clicking record No. So you just just Okay, in Ode to Joy, that, that single line is an I, it's the letter I. Uh, 
please do not use your cap lock. Okay? Do not use cap lock for this. Okay. Now, what's going to happen? The best thing, the best thing to do is to put your music once you've chosen your instrument, put your music in front of your screen. Oh yeah. Because you are not using the screen. So the only volume control is the one in the bottom left-hand corner? That is a master volume. You can use that, or you can use it on the, on the computer itself. And there's this one. Yeah, but don't worry about that. Is that... Okay. Yes. Is that one all the way up? Okay. So this is basically what you need. You need the music. <laughs> right here. Put it up in front of on your screen. Okay. Now let's let's give this let's give this bad boy a whack and let's see what happens all right i'm going to count to four are we picking a part or are we doing a part one not yet because they're just part one slow down, yeah, slow down. <laughs> okay all right i'm going to count to four which in music parlance we say you're going to get four for free which means that I'm going to count to four and you don't have to do anything. Okay? That just gives you the idea of where to start. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay, come on, Tony. I'm all set. All right. <laughs> I've been practicing. I'm good. You? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I've heard that before. I've been practicing this cool. <laughs> All right? Okay. I'm going to give you four for free. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. Keep going. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three. Fourth line. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. <laughs> Thank you, that was awesome. That was hilarious. And if you guys have never played anything before, well, you just did. I'm so happy. <laughs> Um, now, look at your instruments for one more second, okay? And let's all change it to string ensemble. Where do we do that? We do okay, that? remember how you chose your instruments. No. Okay, we have to go back? Yes, we have to go back. And what you do is you click on the little picture of the instrument. Oh. Wait, we got to go back first. Hang on. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh. You got anybody lost? Yeah, yeah, hang on. It's trying yeah. to run. Should be the one in the What's it called? String section. Oh, I see. String section. Yeah, it's actually string section free. Totally screwed mine up. Oh. No, I got it. Okay. Got it? String. Yes. Now we're going to be complicated for a second. Three. Three. Yeah. Three. Three. Oh. All right. Oh, yes. Be a wizard, be afraid, be nervous. Okay. Yes, how lovely. 
Would you you log yourself out? How'd you do that? Okay. Does everybody have a some sort of string? Okay, now we're going to do, we're going to become a laptop orchestra. All right. And just because I feel ornery today. No, I don't. Let's see. Let me look and see what kind of what kind of instrumentalists I have. I've got a recording starting. Well, just stop. Hit the panic button. Oh, I have no no no. Uh, Soundtrap is not mine. I will make that very clear. It is a commercial product that you can find online on the web whenever you watch it. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Front row. Please do part four. Second row. Please do part one. Same piece? What? Same piece? Yes. What do we get? Same piece. Ode to Joy. Take them apart. The page, the page is the part. Or fold them over. And my books are Not part two. No, one. Okay. No. One. That's the order. That's the order. We got one right here. Cat, what are we? Huh? One, two. One, two. Two. We're two. Go. Part two. All right. Part dose. I don't know how to say part. How do you say part? Part day. Part day. And the rest of you guys do what's left. Is three. And everybody else in the back does three. Okay. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to give you guys I'm going to give you guys another musical uh, we have our own lingo in music which is also what makes it confusing and mysterious sounding. Uh, what, what Ode to Joy is mostly is what we call homophony which is a process by which we play all of our notes at approximately the same time. There are no overlapping lines. Right. So the rhythms for each part are the same as each other. Mm -hmm. So it's not complicated. A lot of choral music <coughs> is, is written this way. A lot of chorales, a lot of people hymns. sing this way. Hymns. 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 Thank you, Dr. Burke. You're, You're not my singing genius. <laughs> Okay, let's give this a whack. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. And uh, after I count to four, I'm going to get tired of counting, and I'm going to stop. So you guys are going to have to kind of count on your own in your head. I'll give you a, I'll give you a running start. Okay, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four.
and hold your last neck. Beautiful. <laughs> I'm so happy. Um, I think it gets stuck. Sometimes it's Oh, did you hit Cab? Cab is sustained, so it's got to I, um, I frankly, I could do this all day. I can have fun doing this all day. We are on the clock, however. And and our time is is up. Oh. I, I, this this is killing me. Um, I even had more songs than this ready, but it just goes to show you if you'd like to. Um, but there is one more thing I want I want to talk about. This is college. So one of the things I have to do is called methodology. In other words, I have to explain how come what I figured out works. Um, this, the evaluation method that I chose, it's very fancy based on the application of HCI usability criteria. Human computer interaction is HCI. These, each one of these, these uh, criteria affects everybody in this room who has ever used a computer or who has ever used software. Everything you use technology-wise technology goes through at least these seven criteria to express or to determine your user experience because these, after all, are products. And if you don't have a good user experience, you probably won't use it. And if you don't use it, you probably won't buy it. So. All of these things, effectiveness, how well does the system perform? This is what they want to know, computer people, hardware and software developers. Efficiency, Did, can you do it in a reasonable amount of time? Utility, does it work? Does it do all the functionality that you're going to expect? Learnability, knowing that we mostly don't like to read directions, can you get, can you kind of pick it up from looking at the interface? Memorability. How many of us have had the experience where we sit down at the computer and we hammer out whatever it is that we want to do, we get it done, go back to a, a month later, and we cannot remember how in the world we did whatever it was that we did before. Um, safety. Is there a recovery from error? And what they mean by safety, um, Dr. Allison tells me that there are other things that are meant by safety in terms of hardware, okay, that's a different thing. But safety is more or less your undo button. Can you undo your action? Can you, can you recover from a mistake? And then ultimately satisfaction. So I thought, okay, maybe I can apply this to music notation. Here's where you guys come in. Please look at your, your um, what did I call it? Oh, at your questionnaire. And look at page two, at the other page that you can fill out here. And I would like you to please rate what you just did in terms of Ode to Joy and the notation on this evaluation, on this criteria scale, from one to 10, if you would. So the question is, did the notation work? Was it effective? Were you able to sight read it in a reasonable amount of time? Um, did looking at the notation actually just provide you all the information that you needed in order to play the song? Those who are musicians know that I eliminated all the rests and all the all the little curly cues that we usually see in music. Yeah. Are we writing numbers for all of them or just the first one? All of them. All of them. Okay. Oh, really? I was like, yes. Wait, no, 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 no. Well. Yes, please number them. Just okay. give me a number. Right. One to ten. That'll work. Um, could you figure out what to do by looking at the page after I said it to you once simply? <clears throat> could you remember how to do it if you took it home later and looked at that page? Could you figure out what to do? Safety, can you fix your own mistakes? 
Now, in things that are a little bit more complicated, what, what I've done is I put in numbers for the, you know, I, I refer to all of this by line and by measure. But in more complex pieces, I put in the line number so that we know, all know where we are. So if we make a mistake, we can stop, refer to that, and go back. <coughs> And ultimately, were you satisfied with being able to play the tune once you played the tune? And again, since this is school, I had to uh, put some of my references. <laughs> if you want some more references, you can look up my dissertation after it's done. <laughs> in, in the world. Um, I found this lady, I thought it was brilliant. Um, from a cognitive perspective, Music reading requires several simultaneous, <clears throat> simultaneous processes, including coding of visual information, motor responses, and visual motor integration. What that means is you read it, coding of visual information. Next thing, motor response. You gotta make your fingers do whatever it is that you saw. And then the last one is eye-hand coordination. And yes, even I have to translate some of the things that are said. Um, you are welcome to take everything home with you except for the questionnaire. Computer cutting computers. <laughs> 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 no, not the computer. I'm sorry. One day we'll be so well, we'll, we'll be so. Yeah, well, laptops. yes, disposable laptops. What a wonderful hey, question. Idea. So, you were all these new libraries, and so thank you so much. I want to. I want to introduce you to my uh, doctoral committee, who are just great. I have the best committee ever. Dr. Allison is right here. Raise your hand, turn around. Go, oh, come on, don't be shy. You know you're not shy. <laughs> Dr. Jack, uh, due to family issues, could not be here today. Um, he's a very old and dear friend of mine. Dr. Lori Beatty, my Dr. Beatty. She is a vocal instructor. And Dr. Rafael Orozco, who is, who was given to us who is our dean's representative, and the university recommended him to us, but now that we've got him, we're not going to let him go. <laughs> he is a linguist, and he's got his own levels of genius going across campus. Um, we also have Jennifer Fontenot, who set up the room. We have uh, Darren, my guy over here in the back, my tech guy. Uh, I didn't know who his graduate students were, but I pictured them as his minions. And uh, just like you, we're our own minions. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we have Chris Cannon, who is running the yes. YouTube and set up our YouTube live feed. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you for helping me. And uh, I'm going to ask you to stand up. Yeah.